friends, and welcome back to my crafty space. My name is Crystal, and in today's video, I am going to be working on a project for the Paige Evans Cut File Design Team. For this project, I am going to be telling a story about my son, Jonah, and I'm using two of the cut files from Paige's shop. The first is called Sunrise Sunset, and it's this one right here that has this sun with the rays coming off of it that goes up into the page. I did resize this file. It was originally a 12 by 12 cut file and I reduced it down so it was just under six, it's, it's right around six and three quarters wide by eight and a quarter tall. So somewhere, somewhere in that range. Uh, that way I can fit it inside of my six by eight story album. In addition to this cut file, I'm also using the You Are My Sunshine cut file. It's It had this big sun on it and some scripty words inside that said, You Are My Sunshine. And I just wanted to use the two words, You Are. So I isolated those out of the cut file, which I'll show you here how I did that in just a second. And I cut this out using the dark blue paper from the 6x8 pad in the Wonders collection. And then I also did two more cuts of each of them in this textured white cardstock. What I'm going to do is I'm going to layer them up. So I will glue together the two white ones and then the dark blue one on top in order to create some dimension behind the cut file itself. And then this I'm going to use as my title. So you are... And then my plan is to cut out this photo, add it to the bottom of the cut file here, and back this cut file with a rainbow of colors where I can then write in some different things about Jonah using the prompt you are. So that is what we're going to be doing today. On my desk, I have a couple of different papers that I pulled out of the Wonders collection um, to use potentially with this cut file. So I've got this stripe paper, which is paper number two. And a lot of the stripes inside of, or the rays inside of this sun will actually fit on the lines inside of this cut file. All of them really except for the middle ones are a little bit too wide so I needed to pull some other papers to use for that. So I've got paper number two which also has a purple back and I could totally use that as well. I've got paper number 14 which is this yellow pattern that would be really pretty and then it's got a green pattern on the back so again just getting some more of those simpler colors. This one is paper number 11 and it has this blue sky almost looking back, uh, side B, so that will be really awesome for this. I've got paper number one, which has an ombre patterned yellow, which would be awesome for one of those as well. I also pulled out this number 13 to see you know, if I potentially wanted to use it here. I might actually use it for a different project I'm working on, but it does have this really awesome hot pink type of color on the back. So I might use a piece of this in this project as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you over to my computer so I can show you how I adjusted these cut files to work in my project for today. And then the other thing I would like to show you, and maybe we'll just do one right now is how I back this cut file. So what I'm going to do, let's just do one and then uh, the rest of them I'll do off screen so that it doesn't take me too long here uh, to do it with all of you. So I've got my um, glue here, which I got a new, a new container of the Tombow Mono liquid uh, multi-matte liquid glue. I think I'm saying that right. Anyway, it's the Tombow Mono one, which I'll link in the description down below. That's what I'm going to use here. I also have my Cutter Bee uh, fussy cutting scissors, which are great for, for cut files like this. I'm just going to go ahead and cut this red strip off of this paper. So let's get that off first. And then I'm going to start on this side and go in rainbow order. So what I would do is flip this over to the back side, open up my glue here and just dab. That was kind of a lot. So let's not quite that much. <laughs> so then we're going to dab along this little piece here. 
I don't need to, like, you don't need to have a ton of glue. This is brand new, so it's coming out a little bit quicker than I'm used to. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue it down onto this red piece here, which, yeah, there was a little bit more glue than I needed for sure on that. So I'm going to have to be careful with that here as I'm working with this since it, it's just because it's a new bottle. So there's a lot of glue in there, whereas my other one was basically empty. Once I have it on there, while the glue is still not totally dry, is the best time to cut off all of the edges. So we're just going to cut around the cut file itself, trying to keep as close to the white as possible without cutting the white. And I almost angle my scissors so I can get a little bit underneath that white ridge there. And then we'll do this side and then that will be the first one. If I can finagle this to get it out of the way. So there we go. There we go. So that is the first one there. So I am going to work my way through all of the colors and, um, you know, trying to get as many of these colors in here as I possibly can. And then when I start to run into the issue of these being too wide, I will pull from some of my other pattern papers. I do have almost, well, actually, I have all of the papers from the Wonders collection. So if it turns out that I need maybe an orange or, you know, a different color than what I've got here, then I'll pull something out of my stash that has uh, the majority of it is that color. So I don't want anything that's going to be too patterned like, you know, like this page, like this would be too patterned for putting into one of these, I think. So um, I'm just going to try to keep it as solid colored as possible. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to head off screen and take care of this. Uh, while I'm doing that, I will show you guys the computer portion of this spread, and then we'll come back here once I have this all put together, and then we'll finish putting together the title piece and actually get this spread the rest of the way assembled. So I'll meet you back here in just a second. Okay, friends, so we're over here inside of my Silhouette Studio software on my computer, and what I want to show you is how I am altering two of Paige's cut files to work for me inside of a 6 by 8 spread. So first, let's get these open. I am going to be using the You Are My Sunshine cut file as well as the Sunrise Sunset cut file. So the first cut file we're going to work with here will be this sunrise sunset cut file because it's going to be the easier of the two to adjust. So for this one, what I'm going to do is click on the cut file itself and I want to reduce this down to fit inside of my six by eight album. So I'm actually going to size this at roughly 8.25 inches tall by around 6.875 inches wide uh, or maybe even less than that so that I don't hole punch it but let's see here. So I am first going to grab this bottom box and I'm going to uh, reduce the size until we get to that 8.25 ish <laughs> sizing. So I'm at 8.2123 that's probably oh 8.25, we got it. So now I know that the height of this is going to be right for my page that I'm working with. Next, I'm going to grab the one on the side and we're going to shrink this down until maybe about six and a half inches might be okay. That'll give me a little bit of leeway for punching holes on the outside of the page protector page. So this is going to be my cut file. Now I could have reduced it perfectly to scale, but since this doesn't really bother me having the lines be a little bit out of scale, it actually looks totally fine just like this. That is what I'm going to do. So we're going to cut this one out just like that using some white cardstock. So when I send it, you can see those red lines that indicates that is what it will cut. Now for the next file, I chose this one, this You Are My Sunshine, because I actually want to create a title for my spread that is simply You Are. Uh, what I want to do is add a photo into the middle of this page, and then on each of these rays of the sun, I want to write something about my sun. So You Are Adventurous, You Are Mischievous, You Are Cuddly, those types of things inside of each of those lines. So. I wanted the title, You Are, 
from this file. So what I'm going to do is use my eraser tool, which is here on the left hand side, and I can increase the size uh, if I wish to make my circle bigger or smaller. And then I'm just going to go through here and erase the pieces that I do not need, which will be things like these rays. I'll try to get as close as I can to the title that I want to keep. And then we'll just go through it like that. Now, for now, I'm going to skip over the sections where um, where the title meets up with different parts. So like there from the UR, the R met up with the rays. Same here with the Y. You can see that it meets up here at the bottom. So I'm just going to cut in there fairly close to it and avoid erasing the word if I can. <laughs> like so. And then we'll come in here Actually, yep, so that matters, that does matter. But then this part right here, I can also do a little bit of erasing because we don't need this part of the title. So we're just getting to the point where we have you are, and that's it. Now I can go ahead and reduce my size back down so that I can get in a little bit, oh, see like there I went too close. So you can always undo with Control Z or the undo button. Either one of those works just great. So I basically am just going to get in here and um, adjust these as much as I can down to what they would look like if they were not connected. And then when I get these cut off, I can smooth out those edges just with some scissors. So and then we've got one more over here like that. So you can see that there are still going to be some rough edges here, but that's okay. We will take care of that once we get it off the cutting mat. I'm just going to remove it off and then cut along those lines to smooth them out. So now that I have this created, the next thing I want to do is to grab my pointer tool or selection tool, and I'm going to select both of these words, U and R. Let's copy them, Control C, and then paste them over here on our cut file, and you can see that they are a little too big. So we're just going to grab the lower right hand corner here that's going to allow us to reduce the size but keep everything to scale. And I just want to get it to the point where it goes across the sun, because I'm going to have some kind of picture here, and then I can have this title, this UR title, that's not what I wanted to do, that goes right on top. So that looks pretty good to me. So what I would do then is to set this to the side, and I would copy it just like that, and then paste it. So I am going to cut two of these out of plain white cardstock. And then I would do a third one, so maybe I would delete those original ones and add this here. I'll, I will cut a third one out of a colored cardstock. That way I can get it to pop off the page a little bit and that will be super fun. So I am going to go ahead and get all of these cut files cut out on my silhouette and then I will meet you back over at my craft table to finish putting this one together. All right, friends, so I have returned from off screen and I have this cut file totally backed. So in order to fill in all of these different colors, I did have to pull out some extra papers out of the Paige Evans kit. So I have a bunch of them from the striped paper that I showed you at the beginning, the one that looked like this. And then I also pulled out some of the patterns and the colors out of this six by eight paper pad. So uh, that's where some of these middle ones where the lines were a little bit too thick to fit on these strips came from. In addition to finishing up backing this file, I also took the photo that I had printed of my son and I fussy cut him out so that I can add him onto this file right here. And my plan is pretty simple. I'm going to add him here at the bottom back this on one of these blue papers and then I will add my title on top which says uh, you are so it'll be like this you are and then these will also have a slight white um, outline behind them so I didn't put these together quite yet because I figured I should do that on screen so you guys can see how I go about doing that 
So what we're going to do is get this title put together. We're going to get this backed on one of these pieces of paper, add him onto here. And then my other plan is to add in some words about my son. So you are, and then adding in words that um, relate to him, I guess. I also will probably stitch this onto the canvas so that it stays a little bit flatter to the paper since it is a little bit warped from... Um, backing it with all those papers. So anyway, I'm going to get you on fast forward now and finish putting this spread together. And then once I have this done, we will slow down and finish out our video for today. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do here is decide on which paper I want to mat this file on. And I really, really, really like the way that this blue paper looks behind the rainbow starburst. So this is what I'm going to go with. I'm going to cut this into the page protector size. So 6.875 by 8.25. And then I will also go ahead and hole punch this as well. Once I get this done, you're going to see that I will line up my cut file on here just to see how I'm going to back it and discover that I actually created this cut file at that exact measurement. Whoops. So what I'm going to do is take that blue paper and just put it back in my stash to use for a future project. And then we're going to go ahead and hole punch the uh, the rainbow starburst or rainbow sunrise, I guess is what it really is. Um, we're going to go ahead and hole punch that. So it will go directly into the album without being matted on anything. That was just me forgetting what I had done at the beginning here and um, thinking that I made this file smaller than it is. I actually really like the way that it looks with it being hole punched like this and having this be the entire spread without it being uh, without it having a paper mat behind it. I think it looks really, really cool. So once I have the holes punched into there, I did have to use my power punch just because I've got a bunch of papers layered up behind and it was too thick to fit inside of my six hole punch. Once I had that done, I did go ahead and add some adhesive onto the back of this photo of my son. And then I went ahead and adhered it directly into the middle of this spread, which already looks so good. I just love the way that this page is turning out. So next on my list was to go ahead and make my title pieces with the UR. I layered one of them up. I never actually adhered it all together and placed it on top of Jonah. And I just, I really didn't like it. So I decided to scrap those and to do something different and use some puffy stickers perhaps instead. First, what I wanted to do was grab one of these tiny phrase stickers and add it down at the bottom of the page. I feel like that helped to make the cutoff of his arms a little bit less severe, where it looks like he's, you know, his arms are behind the phrase instead of just being chopped off at the bottom. So I wanted to cover that up and just make it a little bit more subtle. And then I pulled out these puffy stickers that are, or they're foam stickers that are from the Wonders Collection and I was really pleased to find that I had all three letters for the word U in that pinkish color and then I had all three letters for the word R in the navy color. I liked that because I want to put, you know, it's U R. So the U is going to go on the left side of the page, which is where we've got all of the reds and the pinks. So it just made sense that the word over on the left hand side also had that same pink red tone. And then when we get over to the right hand side, that's where we've got the blues and the purples. So having a dark blue. Uh, color to the word made sense over there as well. So it's still, it follows the same flow of the page in general. I did struggle a little bit with where I wanted to orient them. So I grabbed over my uh, ruler here and I'm just sticking them to the bottom of the ruler so I can position them and see how I like it on top of my son. I was debating if I wanted to have his shirt visible where you could see everything that was on it, or if I just wanted to cover it up with the words and not really care about that as much. So it took me a little bit of finagling and adjusting and readjusting. And then finally, I, def I decided to just put them in the middle, which I'm really glad I did because I think it looks good in the middle. It seems a little bit more grounded to have everything centralized, all of these big bulky embellishments, which are basically the photo of my son, these six puffy stickers or 
foam stickers, and then also the tiny phrase orange sticker at the bottom. So having everything centralized just made this feel a little bit more, uh, I don't know, like more structured, I suppose, for a spread like this. So I've got that on there. And then the next thing I wanted to do, I wanted to fill in a little bit more of the space around the UR. So I'm going to grab out some uh, puffy stickers here and add a couple of puffy hearts. Before I do that, I did open up one of the ephemera packs. So this is not the floral pack, this is the just the regular die cut pack. And in this die cut pack, there were uh, three butterflies. So a blue, a pinkish red, and a yellowish orange, which which I did not even plan this. I didn't even know that those were in that pack when I first started the spread, but it worked out so well to have the three butterflies in the three different like main color groups of this rainbow. So I could add them on top of the page and give this page a little bit more interest because I am going to write on it, but I wanted there to be something that was a little bit more substantial on the top of this page. So I've got the three butterflies positioned around Jonah, and then I'm also adding on some of those gold puffy hearts as well. Now that I like where everything's at, I will go ahead and glue it down. I added this giant glob of glue, so I just <laughs> needed to spread it around with my finger. Uh, again, I'm working with a new bottle, so it's a little bit it's a lot fuller than I am used to. I'm used to having to like shake, shake those bottles with all my might in order to get any bit of glue out. <laughs> so we'll get used to it here soon. So we're just going to get those stuck down here on the spread. And then once I have that done, I'm going to grab over a slick writer pen and a journaling pen, both of which I got from scrapbook.com. And I'll take this off screen to go ahead and write my journaling in the lines of the rainbow. All right, friends. So with that, this spread is officially completed. And I think that it is so fun. I'm going to bring it up here a little bit closer so you guys can see all of those words that I wrote on here. So some I wrote oriented this way up to the middle. And the other ones I wrote oriented this way up to the middle. So they meet back to back at the very center here and then just spread out. Uh, that way it would be a little bit easier to read so that nothing ended up upside down. I also am glad that I went ahead and went with these uh, foam stickers instead of the cut file that I originally had done. If I had cut that out in some other color cardstock, it might have worked a little bit better for me. Like maybe if I had done it in yellow or maybe green, but the blue just blended in too much where you could not even see it against his shirt. So ultimately, I'm actually really glad about this. I think the dimension is super fun. And um, I also now, you know, realize that I cut this to be exactly the size of the page protector. So what's going to happen is I'm going to put this in my album just like this on the, on the rings. And then I will eventually create another spread with the rings on the opposite side. And then those two pages will be adhered back to back. So for now, I'm not going to finish the back of this. I'm just going to wait. And then once I have something else to adhere it to, then that will help it to stay a little bit more flat and in the album. Ultimately, I love the way that this turned out. And someday when Jonah looks back at his page, I hope that these words can just be words of affirmation for him to show him how much I love him and all of these awesome things about him and his personality. I hope that you guys have enjoyed seeing this spread come together. If you have, I would love a thumbs up down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button while you're there so you can check out all of my future crafty videos. Also, there will be some additional uh, close-up photos and the like over on Paige's blog. So I will make sure to leave a link down in the description box for that as well so you can head over there check a little bit more about this out. And then there are also all kinds of other awesome projects that are constantly being shared on that blog as well. All right, you guys, I will be back uh, later this week with some additional content. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will catch you in the next video. <laughs> Bye friends.